Hey everybody, I'm Morgan. And this is Ryan. And we're talking chitty. Man, it has been an exciting time. It's been a while since we've done one of these though. We always like to do it. We If this thing was set up all the time, we would be putting... I mean, 30 minute podcasts out a day. Dude, definitely. It's just having to set this thing all up together. It takes more time. We could be doing more things than just setting things up. If we had a room, I'm going to get rid of this coffee cup behind me. If we had a room that just everything was set up in and everything was ready to go and we just had to sit down and do our shit, then it would work. But yeah. We just sit down. Yeah. Knock one out real quick. Tiny house. It's so today. House. We were going to talk about what the fuck have we been up to. We've kind of been just, you know, if it if it wasn't for you, nobody would even know anything about us. Because <laughs> you're, you're the social like, media. We'd be like mole people. <laughs> well, I mean, we wanted to be doing that, but I'm saying nobody would hear from us. Right. If it wasn't for the social media that you did. So thank you. Hey, you're welcome. Yeah. It, it's in our favor sometimes. Take a fucking compliment. <laughs> you know, it's hard to sometimes. Why? You've been doing a really good job. Why is it hard to take a compliment? I don't know. You know, we. I think because I'm my own worst critic. Sure. I think, honestly. But, yeah, thank you. You're I'll welcome. take it. I will take that. Um, but you've been doing a really good job with um, our new tactical business. Man, I am so, that. I'm in such an uncomfortable level right now. Like, probably the most uncomfortable I've ever been in my life. And I think that's a good thing because every time... I push myself into that gray area that makes me feel uncomfortable. I know that I'm growing. And what sucks Absolutely. right now is that like all 360, like even my exit, I've closed off. Um, and I just feel like, man, so uncomfortable. It doesn't matter which way I turn right now dealing with this. Uh, super uncomfortable. Learning every single second that I work on this. The last time we did a podcast, we talked about um, all the books that we were reading. And you know we were what? kind of waiting for a business idea. We were kind of working on it. The can of aid. Okay, no, no, no. So I'm going to steal from Kiyosaki for a moment. Okay. He said something that in Rich Dad or Poor Dad, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that has stuck with me. I mean, it wasn't even the most profound thing that he even said, I think, in that book. But when he talked about if you can see one opportunity, you'll see more or you'll start to see them all the time. And I mean, shoot, we only saw that or read that book last year. It was last summer when we were in Sierra Vista. And yeah, while we were losing weight okay, and nice. that's where it was. Yeah, so. that's right. So anyways, um, yeah, he said that, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Fuck. Um, what you'll was see the opportunities. Was, oh yeah, yeah. You'll see an opportunity everywhere. Right. And man, I remember the very first opportunity we saw and we just started capitalizing on that opportunity. And then all of a sudden more opportunities came up. And since last year, the amount of opportunities, when you look at your life as opportunities just everywhere, man, it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more exciting. And I don't think this would have grown, this DTS would have grown uh, had I not had that mindset. Because that's the epitome of what that, you know, of what Kiyosaki said in that book. Uh, once you see one, you'll see more opportunities. We went looking for, so what we're talking about is uh, yeah, defense uh tactical solutions so morgan and i we've always wanted to have a tactical supply company and one of the worst things about i would say a tactical supply company is probably all the inventory that you have to have yeah and without giving too much away because i don't want to give too much away um we might have solved that problem and when we went looking for the whoopie robes idea which by the way yeah. oh we haven't even told anybody about whoopie robes yep. no See, that's what I'm saying. It's been so long, but we, we have been on know. such an adventure lately. I think we didn't really know what it was going to be. What's that? This whole business idea. Like, we, they, they were kind of ideas, and we are just kind of feeling them out and playing them, pushing them as far as we could, and then it opened up these other opportunities, and we just didn't really know what we had Just one yet. opportunity. We were drowning in opportunities. Right. There so, was just so many thrown at us, and then we were able to continue to grow off of each opportunity and take a little bit of this from that, add it to this. We started with the, the concept of the of, of developing a wooby robe. Yeah. For those that don't know what a wooby is, it's a poncho liner the military uses since Vietnam. Yep. It's like a weather resistant type, cold weather type thing. Um, 
And everybody loves their Wooby. So yeah, replaced, I think, wool blankets. We're going to make a robe out of it. We actually have been working with a seamstress to get this concept idea down. And in the meantime, Ryan... So to them, this is new. Yeah, this whole Wooby robe. This Wooby robe idea has grown so, so, so yeah, large because of opportunities. Room. Yeah, it's actually was just a product. Yeah. Now we have a full company that we're working on developing yeah. right now. It's so weird. We're getting a hold of manufacturers, trying to get the, um, like the fabric and the thread and the Sherpa. getting the seamstress to get the concept done. And uh, it's kind of just been like, hurry up and wait. And we didn't really know how far the idea was going to go, really. So have we told them how this came about? Just the idea in general? No, where we got the idea. Yeah, we were watching American Idol <laughs> and... Uh, I don't remember the guy's name that was wearing the robe, but it looked like a Wooby robe, but it wasn't. It was like a jacket made out of Wooby. He was like the top 10. I think he was in the top 10 or top 15. The, mm. the meet DeMarcus? Doesn't even DeMarcus? matter. Doesn't even matter. Okay. But so anyways, uh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. So Katy Perry was like, I want your jacket. And I'm like, dude, I want your fucking jacket. Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> it was pretty cool. And I was like, oh, my God. What if we made a freaking... I was like, that looks like a Wooby. What yep. if we made a robe out of a Wooby? And then we've been kind of throwing the idea around with friends, and I think we're going to add some Sherpa to the inside. So we've been mm -hmm. trying to figure out a good... Because, you know, if you get out of the shower, and that Wooby is, like, going to stick to you, you know? Like, I feel... Maybe, yeah. So, like, maybe if, you know, there was the Sherpa, you know, but the big thing is, is, like, testing the market. We don't know how much people are going to want to pay for a Wooby robe, okay? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I already bought the website, guys. I mean, just a Wooby <laughs> by itself is... $40. Yeah, 40 to 45 dollars yeah yeah from amazon and, oh my god and some of these and it's crappy material. oh my god some of them not all not all well the but two we bought were really bad man They're such cheap apart. cheap material so man there is so much i'm learning like right now mm -hmm. about how far we've come so it's cool that we're talking about this because yeah. everybody else is just kind of lost in the sauce like what are they talking about so anyways we yes we started this idea with Wooby robes and now we were uh we're actively right now working with a professional seamstress and right now we're just fine-tuning our concept design and um yeah so we started with wooby robes okay and we started buying uh wooby i think we just bought it from amazon just just yeah. to get the design concept yeah. and it was about 40 bucks the quality of this thing is just hot garbage yeah. <laughs> it is freaking atrocious it's There's no trash. way this way this costs forty dollars. I think the retailer is making more than the actual manufacturer on this one. For Definitely, sure. but like, we I guess we kind of kept running like if things were taking longer, and then once the the when, I don't know what happened, and we started doing getting into this tactical store. Like what? Okay, so or? we started yeah looking around like where can we go, and we finally started saying to ourselves like we got to take the middleman out. We have to. Yeah. We're smart enough. To go to um, a manufacturer, not hot. Well, to the, to the source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's 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 take someone's uh, that wholesaler or the middleman. Yeah. Take them out of the equation and let's start going straight to the source. Yeah. And uh, well, you were talking about books, right? Mm -hmm. So we got to make sure we uh, throw in that book. The uh, man, what is that called? Uh, the FBI guys. Uh, the negotiating book. Damn, what is that called? Never split the difference. Uh, never split the difference. That's yeah. exactly what it is. Uh, Chris Voss. Anyways, so remind me later. Okay. Sometime. I'll make a note. <laughs> <clears throat> so anyways, yeah, we started going to, you know what, this actually started when you were talking about your CBD and instead of being just another cog in the wheel of a, what do they call it, a brand ambassador, like, why don't we just start our own? Yeah. Um, Cause we can go contact these manufacturers. Yeah. Anybody can do it. Anybody can start their own company off of you know, the manufactured CBD, there's so many people doing it. That's where we first got the idea. So then I kind of stole that business model from you and, uh, whatever we started contacting manufacturers and, and I've talked to manufacturers in China, India. I've talked to them the in the United States, the UK, yeah. um, a uh, couple other Asian countries. Um, We're trying not to spend all of our money on this business either. Like, we want to do it smart. Super frugal. So you know, we're doing a lot of the legwork. My escape candles, it was kind of like, I didn't really have a budget, and Ryan was my only investor, and it didn't really seem fair. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't always make money. Right. Okay? <laughs> a lot of times, but so this time we wanted to make, like, especially with my CBD business, like, I'm not going to have him invest. I mean, it's also, like, you know, for more campaign investments and stuff, but still, like, 
I don't want to throw all of our money into something that we don't know. If it's We're smart happen. with our money. Right. We don't just throw it into something because right. it's just the whim of the week type thing. Right. We're doing yeah. our due diligence. And he, so he's been in, on this like a really weird schedule. Like he's up until like 4 a.m. talking. Because a lot of on, these people, that's like, their time. All you know? these different chats, like trying to talk to these manufacturers. Man, it's and fun. their culture and what's disrespectful and not. And Oh my you know, God, I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah. So we got to talk about that since you just brought it up. Yeah. Good. So when, uh, just a little fun fact for you guys, if you ever want to go talk to Chinese manufacturers, it's better to not say no. Um, I guess it is very disrespectful. Yeah, it's but it's so closed minded now that I kind of see the other side um, here in America. You know, you ask somebody a question, you expect a straight answer back. You don't want them to elaborate on this. Well, I want to do this, but and then 10 minutes later, you find out they're just not going to purchase something. So I was just really honest and blunt in the beginning. Um, trying to be business oriented. Well, yeah, trying to be efficient with my time, sure. not waste their time. But what I found out, though, was um, somebody let me know right away how offensive it was. And they didn't say anything negative or derogatory to me. They just they went from giving, you know, longer, elaborated answers to very short, direct Basically, yeah. what I was giving them, I, I later found out. Yeah. I was giving them, it was like talking to somebody in the military again. And so all of a sudden, I noticed their tone change, and that's what made me go research. So I went, long story short, research it up. You're better off to not say no. Now, once I learned that, thank goodness it was very early uh, in my negotiations with these uh, manufacturers, because... If I would have done this to every single person since... I would have lost and missed the opportunity that we're in right now because yep. that's what kind of opened up the, the I guess, the business opportunity mm -hmm. side, not just the product side. It's, um, you know, I'm going to say now, if you've never done this before, it's very difficult, extremely difficult. Anybody can do it, though. Yeah. Don't let me discourage anybody from doing it. If I did it, anyone can do it. But it's just a learning not mm -hmm. to say no. You're better off not saying direct no to somebody. You're better off giving them kind of a cliffhanger like well maybe not right now but i'll keep your information for the future right because then whenever this was three weeks four weeks ago um when the tariffs came down when they started increasing it now mm -hmm. by 25 percent, the tariff was 10 percent already uh on china now it's 25 percent on china and once that tariff came through all the manufacturers that i didn't um shut down started contacting us and they actually have facilities also here in the United States. So because of this, I was able to work out a, I guess, a better deal. I'm trying to use my words wisely here, but I was able to develop a company off of not saying no to anybody, not being so isolationist, closing everybody off, right. just immediately no, get away from me. I don't want to talk with you anymore. Right. Basically cliffhanging. Um, you know, these contacts of this network that I have, you know, on developed. accidentally developed, um, they started contacting me because now the tariffs are going up. So that led to that book that we were talking about, Never Split the Difference by Chris Vaughn. Um, a buddy of mine, he was the one that turned me on to the book, told me, hey man, my brother uses this for his company. They swear by this book and it's the Black Swan Group by Chris Vaughn. He's an uh, FBI negotiator. And... I honestly didn't know where this book would come into play. And when I was reading it, um, I'm not going to lie. The entire time, I'm like, this is horseshit. <laughs> Half the shit this guy is saying is such horseshit. This would never work. And it makes you uncomfortable to, to use some of these things. Really? Because one of the things that he actually talks about uh, is the calibrated questioning. And just when somebody, when you're in a negotiation and someone gives you a price, just how do you expect me to do that? You know how weird that is when you actually use that in how a do sentence? How you expect me to do that? Exactly. Just how like would that. you even respond to that? Like, With an inflection in your voice, too. Not negatively. And it, it, your tone definitely matters. So uh, like, I, how do you expect me to do that? Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it you can't like, say it like that. Okay. How do you expect me to do that? Because you're genuinely right. asking me to help you. We're both help rats in this maze. Out, right? Help me get to the end. You're not asking to be disrespectful. You're not mm -hmm. asking to be... It's a little cunt. Yeah, you know, you're yeah. asking to seriously say, well, how do you expect that? me to do that? Help me work this out. And that's not the whole premise of the book, obviously, no, no. but that is one thing that I have used. And I will say this, um, learning to negotiate with these uh, different manufacturers from all over the world, including the United States, 
it is so fun to use these tactics because I used to look at negotiations so much like it's war. Like, I mean, this is mortal combat. Yeah, like you have to Someone's got to dominate, right? Well, you kind of work, you know, we brainstorm so much about conversations about how they could go and where they could go. And like, so we've pretty much talked almost every angle out of most of the negotiations we're going into. I don't know if anybody else is like that, but I know we kind of were like, well, what if they say this? Or, well, if they say this, we can say this. Or, and it's know. not, and that's so much work. That's how we used yeah. to do it. Absolutely. And, this and then we learn it is a discovery process. Yeah. This isn't Mortal Kombat. Mm -hmm. It is. It is uh, two equals trying to find the best solution, and it needs to be beneficial for both. It has to be beneficial yeah. to uh, for both. They're and what I've happy. learned, the more I shut up and listen in these negotiations, the more I'm able to um, find my way through this labyrinth of touchy subjects, things that you know maybe are touchy even for you, like maybe I don't want to get to this point yet or whatever. But once you just really learn, first off, about the company, their strategies, the more I shut up and listen, the more I learned, the better deal I could work out for my business. And again, we went from just this will be rogues idea, just a product, to now we're working on the website for BTS, so Defense Tactical Solutions. We were being contacted by the people we had hit up for the fabric and all these things and we'd gotten a few oh, yeah. samples oh, from yeah. these companies and we really liked the one that uh that came in um from that one company do you remember from the american manufacturer and oh, the other oh manufacturer you got from so, out of country yeah so like i went online to and it was nick of time textiles i think and I, I got a sample it was on it was an american company and i i got a sample of sherpa and it was like fo, it was like faux sherpa i knew because it was a cheap sure it's polyester like absolutely like yeah. of yard. and oh my god it was like combustible like it almost seemed it was like a fucking fire starter is what it felt like it was horrible it was looking scratchy and like fake looking Not it soft. didn't look like sherpa it looked like nope. fuzzy cushion i don't know i don't know you know and that's one of the things it. that it was shitty i have now learned because give it 2008 talk to 2008 me i would have told you american all the way yada 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 you know the sad reality is not all but some uh American made uh, products that we have received were honestly some of the worst products that we have, whether it was for building of this bus. Oh my God. Yes. The ones that were kind of like the Here's this sample of Sherpa. I mean, they have low quality and it's just like they don't care enough. It's almost like they're trying to saddle that, you know, 60, 50, 60, 70s american work ethic to today yeah, it do, it's not the exact that. same at all no it is absolutely not built american tough no. like it used to be so no. now i think they just kind of try to ride that name so oh it's american made okay yeah but yeah okay. even the american steel is all recycled like rigid steel yeah. it's not fucking like the steel that they used to build rockefeller center you oh yeah it's all I recycled mean? still like, yeah it's, it's very Who knows what's in those different it's, it's crappy it. still. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Plastics, everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So, oh, your Where's alarm that? is going off. Where's my phone? Our walking alarm. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it's okay. Go find it. But anyway, so yeah, so we've been basically working on trying, uh, or I mean, really, these opportunities have kind of jumped in our lap. So. Ryan's been working on the actual website and like learning to code. He's been using this program. He wanted to talk about. Um, yeah, damn. <laughs> tiny Is space. That the juice? Tiny the smoke? house. Uh, Oop, yeah. You better grab that. Oh, come on. Where are you? There you are. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Okay. Don't put it on there again. No, I'm just gonna don't put it on there again. That's what I just said as you were doing it. <sighs> Tiny you know. spaces. Put it just right behind you, man. Here. Yeah, finish up what you were saying, no? But yeah, so he was he was using this company Webflow to do the actual website. Oh yeah, I'm like totally stuck on this website. So remember, this all started with just one product of Wobby Rogue. Remember, like we gotta go back there. Like, yeah. And now, you know, we're actually into making this website for DTS. Webflow was a really cool um, uh, website that I found. So back in 2012, 2013, I started learning about HTML code. And so it's been a long time. I don't remember exactly everything, uh, but it was enough. It was a good enough foundation for me to use Webflow 
because now it's almost plug and play. You don't have to know the actual code. Just understand how to stack different things, you know, add a container, add a div block. That way you're containing. If you have two div, blo uh, div blocks, anybody that understands coding, you know, the containers containing my div blocks in a certain section, these div blocks are just different information. So this thing is like full freedom to do whatever you want to do with this. It's very awesome. It's what I thought Adobe was going to be, actually. Um, yeah, and that was something else. That was just full-on coding over there at Adobe DreamWorks. And maybe, again, I just didn't understand it. But Webflow is pretty cool. The only problem I'm having right now is you can create your own class. So let's say I want to use this footer on every single page that uh, I create for this website. Um, on the main page, everything's fine. Once you get to the second page, uh, without any kind of gnarly spacing issues, um, it's just acting fucky. So, uh, I, to uh, say the least, to say the least, it's been about what a week, week and a half. And yeah, I'm still waiting for an answer it. just, uh, cause I think it's honestly a bug now. It's not so much my coding cause there's no, like I said, gnarly spacing on the bodies, anywhere within that container, anywhere within that section. So I don't understand. There's a reason it's not working. I think it's a bug. But again, okay. He's not a coder. And I guess we're just kind of saying this too, is like, we didn't know how to do any of this. Talk to many like I said, I'm website. so uncomfortable right now. You know, yeah, and here we are doing it. You know? Yeah, just putting our blinders on, moving head first. Because you know, we did talk about uh, one thing that did very well back in 2008 during that you know housing collapse. Man, the prepper community came yeah. out strong. The survivalist community, like yeah. that community, freaking grew. It did. There was a lot of money being tossed around in that. We were spending a lot of money on that, and I'm yeah. ready to be on the other side of that coin. And also, but promote quality products yeah. that we use. Well, actually, like, we now understand about. so much more. Yes. Again, started with Wooby. Yeah. And now we understand the different fabrics for right. Wooby all the way to the different tactical gear that we will be offering pretty soon. So. And we're going to be doing like a lot of giveaways. We're really excited about that. That's like the main part of the business the model. The main part of the business is we're going to give away so much For every shit. $5 you spend, we're you gonna get... Give away. A uh, chance to whatever that giveaway is. Yeah. So if you spend a hundred bucks, you get twenty entries into yeah. the giveaway. Yep. If you spend five bucks, you spend five bucks. Yeah. Which has kind of been a pricing challenge too in this yeah. website because it's you know normally before there's some kind of you know marketing behind just doing nineteen ninety nine versus twenty dollars. Mm. But ours is going to be a giveaway, and if I charge you nineteen ninety nine, you're seriously one cent away from a from a from a full raffle. entry. Yeah. So it's like. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and just do a rounded twenty dollars. Sure, yeah. maybe it doesn't look as sexy as nineteen ninety nine, but nineteen ninety nine only gives you what? Uh, three chances, right. three entries. When one where extra twenty dollars, boom, yeah. gives you four. So. And so, if you guys haven't yet, definitely, um, you know, go to the Talking Chitty Facebook and Instagram pages. Make sure you're liking those because I'm gonna be sharing all the giveaways definitely on Talking Chitty. We're going to have plate carriers. We're going to have... Three-day survivalist bags. Oh, my God. We have bags. so many different bags now for products. These ones that are made out of parachute. Or they're for cool. parachute. It's like almost like a whoopee, like a slick. I cannot wait to get it. Ryan well, gave me the idea even to, uh, to even get some of those. was Because when Ryan was in the military, he brought home this saw round bag. And it was like a long purse. Anybody in the military that knows what a saw round bag looks like, it's really cool. Give it to your wife. She'd like it. I don't know. I did. Anyway, and I used it as a purse. And I fucking loved it because it had the stamp from U.S. Army. It was just very authentic. And everybody very asked cool. me, yeah. like, where did you get that? I'm like, well, my husband took it. <laughs> he acquired it. <laughs> he, you know, he, yeah. he he's a saw gunner at the time, so he would do that. I wasn't. Well, why did you have a saw round bag? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> It's not like they like you know they're. Didn't you ever carry a saw? Anybody? No. Like when I mean, you had I, mount training and stuff because that's when you gave it to me was when we're training. No, like oh shit, who knows? Because I had it at like Sam's Club when I worked there, and everybody was like, "You have oh, access to so many different rounds." I probably saw it, anyway, thought it was cool. It's cool. It. Yeah. And so I'm I like, mean, acquired it. So anyway, so we need to like anyway. We have a lot of really cool stuff. There's a really cool koozie that looks like a tactical vest. Oh my god, sell. that thing is so cool. Yeah, yeah. No, that's the main thing. We're gonna okay. call it tacticoozy. Tacticoozy. But or tactical koozie. That's what it is. Tactical koozie. Yeah. But still, it's badass. Like, 
the products we want to offer, we do not want them to be expensive. What else? Oh, we get that fanny pack. The fanny pack. I think I'm going to start rocking this fanny pack because I it's pretty cool. I would do it for our cool. runs for sure. Like, cool shoulder bags. Yes. Like, yes. We, have, we see coyotes and rattlesnakes dead all the time. You can hook your water onto it now. Oh, shit. That's true. I'm well, telling you. Well, here's the thing. You. And all of our bags are going to have a, it says it's an optional camelback bladder, but I believe not we're going to supply. Not every bag. Almost most of, yeah, bags. Most of the bags yeah. already have a hydration Good. bladder. Um, yep. Anyway, so just anyway, keep your keep your eyes out because we will have a Instagram for DTS rifle soon. cases, double rifle cases, double pistol cases, just pistol regular case. Regular Wobbies. We'll have the Wobby robe on there. Rain slickers. We'd love to hear y'all's feedback on this too. If anybody yeah. like you know, we want to know if anybody's even gonna buy this shit. I think a lot of people will definitely buy this. I feel like this they would next business cycle stuff. downturn that the economy is gonna go through. Yeah, people are gonna do it all over again. And just here's the other thing. The cool thing is. We, I don't want to say this, we have made it to where not only do we have actual tactical supplies, something that's made of either, you know, uh, 600D Condora fabric, um, which is fantastic, actual, that is actual tactical equipment, or a 1000D nylon, mm -hmm. um, so very sturdy, something that would literally last you a lifetime. Yeah. Oh, and we're going to be able to offer a six-month warranty on all of our products. Oh. As yeah, well, that's right. that is something that we negotiated and worked out. Yeah, um, that's right. So it's what this business is. It's not going to just be a fly by night business. We've actually put a lot of care, a lot of thought into if we're going to do this. Oh, and that was the point I was making. So you can get some real high speed fabrics, real high speed material that's going to last you a lifetime that can actually take you using it and abusing it every single day. Right. Um, but we're also going to offer the same look, the same design we've been able to work out with maybe a 600 PVC polyester, which is still great. That is like the most common for, you know, expensive backpacks. Right. But it isn't going to last you, let's say, through a war zone. You know, it's more for, I I'm going to use this because I'm going to throw it in and out of my vehicle to and from work. Great for that. Right. It's not so great if you're going camping every week. If you're going camping, you know, once, sure, that's going to be phenomenal. It's going to look badass. But if you're going to be Bear grills, now you'd probably want to get the 1000D nylon. So, um, yeah, that's the best part about this is we have something very high end, something not, I hate to call it low end because it's not. It's, it's just, just not the it's not fabric warmer. isn't as tough. But here's the thing. Right. So now people at least have a choice. Do I want something that's very durable and pay the price of something that's seriously going to be the last backpack I'll ever have to buy? Or... Do I want something that, oh, this is just going to be perfect for me to go to and from the gym every single day, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. I Yeah, it's it's an exciting thing because I'm excited to get some of these and start using them and start seeing us post some pictures. So, I mean, definitely go on there and follow. We want to we want to make this stuff affordable and give it away. Like, we just want to help people. We've only ever started any of this bullshit to help people. <laughs> All the social media, the crabshomestead.com, everything, everything, everything came from a place of love to help people and yeah. make it realistic yeah. for them. You can defend your family. And yes, it's realistic. You can afford to defend your family or have a go bag. The only thing we pulled out of our house during a house fire was our bug out bags. Yeah. Of important information that we had. Yeah, yeah. We knew if something, anything, anything were to happen, happen, that was a bag that we needed to grab. So, yes. yeah. They're go bags. So it was. It's personal. Yeah. Right. So... You know, for sure, and especially when we lost all that gear that we even collected over time, it was like, dang. And now we're in the bus. We wanted, we have been trying to educate ourselves and, and are educating ourselves on business opportunities and negotiating, keeping our eyes yes. open. And here they are. They're literally just falling in our lap. Everything is slow. I mean, I get, a, like, even Absolutely. with my, my CBD company, like, I get hit up all the time from people that have been following it. And I only have, like, 100-something followers with 200 followers. It's not a lot. But the people who know me are hitting me up and saying, hey, have you figured out a CBD company yet? Yeah. No. Um, I, I am recommending HempMeds.com because they have they do have good testing. They have good prices. Uh, their sister company is Canaway. Um, so, and, so it, and they have really good stuff. It all comes from the same place, Medical Marijuana Inc. So I like that company. Um, and a lot of people don't even know that where Canaway is getting their stuff from is Hemp Meds. It would be the exact yeah. same spot that same you're thing. getting it from. It's just cheaper. That thing blew up. My pan up. literally fucking just exploded. Show that. There's like three pieces now. I like clicked it and it was like boing. You know, it was, it's was. it been kind of fun you doing the Canababe thing. Um, it's brought... 
It's brought some crazies out. Some emotionally so, unstable people and companies. I'm glad he talked about that. So if you guys haven't, again, we also have a cannabis page on Instagram and uh, Facebook. Go follow it because I have been um, releasing the articles that I wrote based on my ranking system. Before I was just posting pictures of the ranks and some about um, what I found out. Now I'm actually posting the full-blown articles on thecrabshomestead.com. Um, about the companies and I'm, so I'm not going to mention it. Y'all can go check it out and read the comments and figure out which company it is. Look at the reviews. Um, there's a link up there for Cannabade um, and underneath that company reviews actually just click it. You'll see them. But anyway, um, yeah, so we freaking, so I posted this review, this company and the main thing is guys, if it's a hard time, if, if, if it's not easily accessible to get to these tests, uh, pesticide testing, heavy metal testing, microbial testing, warning. Warning. Yeah. Warning. If you cannot access those easily from the website, they're hiding something. There is no reason anybody should have that information on lockdown. You've had to sign NDAs. I've had to sign freaking disclo non-disclosure agreements about, for testing. I've had to talk to business owners. I've been given um, uh, lab results that say, you know, not for public record. Why? And if then I'm as soon as you got the it, information that was so tight-lipped, so top secret... It turned out to be horseshit. It was wrong information. The lab put or the the, the lab put the wrong information on. Well, the you're report. confusing two different things. Well, I'm speaking in general. You're oh, speaking yeah. very specifically. Oh yeah, it's all wrong. If it is hard for you to find this information, if they are making you sign all this information, you know, all these different NDAs or this disclosure, that disclosure, or you can't, you know, um, you, know, you can't publicly put it. this, or you can't. Whatever it is, if you have to sign an NDA, every single time we have found, it is horseshit. They are not, they're not hiding some great mystery. No. They're hiding their horseshit that Bullshit. they're trying to hawk on people right now. They don't want everyone to know. Listen, if you run a good company, a clean company, you want people to know. Yes. Look, this is what we have to offer. Transparency. The one that, um, you know, Morgan did recommend and mention that one was great because, you know, we're still looking and right now it's kind of difficult to work with them as a business right now, yeah. but, um, it's hard to get their time or, or to, to, to you know, get us, they want to do everything on the phone, um, versus us just sending them, shooting them an email. Like we work with other manufacturers. Right. I worked with my manufacturers, some on the phone, but a lot of it was back and forth on either a right. DM or, uh, an email, mm -hmm. but your company that you mentioned, they just didn't want to yeah. DM. They didn't want to email. They want to talk, and they want to be able to talk to me. And I get that. Like, I understand, but it's... it's but I you're get, not just dealing with them. I don't think it's efficient. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm dealing with all these other people. So anyway, but they're good for customers. Their prices are cheaper than Canaway, too. So, I mean, go to the website and check it out. And for me, I'm, I'm going through them also because they're one of the few companies that do offer wholesaling. Uh, or, you know, be, as me as a wholesaler or as a retailer... Um, so I would be able to actually promote that brand because ultimately it's for, I did this research for us so we could actually use the products. So I wanted to get them one at a cheaper rate, but I also too wanted to get it so I can use the isolate to make like CBD lip balms and salves, make my own stuff. Um, nice. I just got hit up by one of the manufacturers. So we're going to have a conversation tonight. Now. Yeah. That's why it started blowing up. So, um, but yeah, so and Cindy. Basically, you guys, if, if you're doing your own research, if you cannot access this, it's a certificate of analysis called a COA or a lab result easily. Don't go through the company. It's a snake oil sale. Um, there's only a few. It's called the U.S. Hemp Authority. There's 13 companies that have that seal. Hemp Meds is one of them. However, I have been going down the list of companies, and even those <clears throat> don't have all the tests. So trust it, but... Do your own research. Still trust yourself. And, you know, go check out Cannabis. Trust but verify, huh? Uh, yeah, I mean, do your own research. Don't listen to just me. Don't listen to just that company. Do you, Even if it says pure organic, 100% pure organic pesticide free. Empower I yourself. Care what it says. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, empower yourself. If it says pesticide free, make them prove it. If they can't prove it, follow Then it's horseshit. Yes, yeah, it's horseshit. Yeah, it's horseshit. Go follow me on Cannabis. Because you can't say it if it's not true. Um... Also, okay, so yeah, recently, so I mean, if you want to see how crazy it's gotten in the CBD world, like how offended people can get over their own information that's wrong, um, a company I requested information from sent me a lab re report. I asked, uh, and it was anyway, it was the wrong stuff. I gave, I put out my review. It was pretty much a garbage review because it was garbage information. 
Well, the company contacted me immediately and threatened me. Not immediately. It was after. It was, what, another month after you made your review? Or was it a couple of weeks? Oh, yeah, it was a couple of weeks. Some time had gone by. After I posted by. it, yeah, on thecrabshomestead.com is where she found it. And little old you. I mean, little old me with about a few hundred followers. <clears throat> um, so basically, she sent me this email and was like, you better stop, like, or you need to take this post down or, or basically else. It was like all ultimatums. It was all like. Bit my foot, the cat. <laughs> I didn't know he was over there. Scared the shit out of me. <laughs> but um So or else ultimatums yeah, so, yeah, threatening you, totally we will do me. more, we will and then she go, come like, after you. Right after she threatened me, she's like, Okay, even though this test was wrong and we gave you the wrong information. So she admitted Yes. She admitted she was wrong. She admitted they gave me and she had lab fixed the information and she sent me the updated results. Uh, because they then they actually because at that time they only had potency testing they did not have pesticides or any other testing and um, I had asked them well hey when you do get full panel labs just let me know well they never responded back to me until I posted what I did and then she's like oh we have the full panel results here it is but you need to take this down anyway I replied back and I was just I don't take kindly to threats um, and it was also signed uh, with her pharmacist title which with, I guess her license, with, her, with her license, basically, she signed it with letting her letting you know that she was a licensed person, right. a professional, yeah. threatening you with a Hotmail account. By the oh, way, it wasn't even her account. business account that she no. originally conversated with you it was at. A me account, even that one was just a uh, me dot com. It was I, it was a fucking Apple account. Mm -hmm. So, but so yeah, the second time ended up uh, at this time we didn't know, but it wasn't even her email. It was actually her son's email that she ended up contacting. But me how on. did you find that out? So okay, this is the best this part. The, the more they part. contact us, the more we would find out. Like they weren't they weren't smart enough to understand. Yeah. If I stop this conversation and the communication between right. Cannon Babe and me, right. then she'll stop finding shit out about me. And anyway, so I replied to her email and I, and I updated the the I updated my review. It's still shitty because the way she threatened me, I was like, "Fuck you! You're gonna get a one." Well, and she's giving you incorrect information yeah, from Jump Street. I would never so. recommend this company to anybody just based on how they treated me and good companies. And guess what, guys? We just discovered a really fucked up company. So anyway, so oh, so uh, so I posted all this. I posted these emails she's sending me on Facebook, and I was like on my Cannabis page, and I was like, "Can you believe this lady's threatening me?" Blah blah. All of a sudden, this lady comes out of nowhere, and she's like, everything you're saying about this person's not true. And I'm like, how is it not true if I'm literally just posting, posting what, what they're she sending wrote? You. Yeah. Like, it doesn't make sense. So I click on it, and it's the freaking pharmacist lady that's been emailing me, I think. It's her fucking daughter-in-law. And then I found out that she's married to the guy that the email came from, not even the mom's email that the pharmacist that you originally that it, spoke with. That I originally, it was actually her son's email, who we found out later was like a part owner. So anyway, they kept contacting. So hold on us. a second. So right strange. now, you originally got contacted by, you know, one of the ladies that ran the place. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, you're getting threatened through a Hotmail account. Yes. And now all of a sudden. Their, her daughter-in-law hits you up, and then you find out, so this husband is also owner of this company. Right. Had she not contacted us, we would have never been able to put these two together, no. these three together. And then we even found out that the email that was used, the Hotmail one, wasn't for the original lady that you had no. contacted. It was completely someone different, a man, not a woman. A man. And the man that was married to the lady that hit you up. on Facebook, yeah. So that was kind of fun and interesting to learn because now it's like, so why is this lady using her son's email, Hotmail account? Or then we started thinking, is this guy, is he the one's using his mom's license to right. threaten customers? Because of, is he the yeah. one that's acting, you know, getting on his wife's Facebook and trying to, you better stop all this? Like, how crazy did this just go? Like, how unstable, mentally unstable this has is. this person become? Long this is unhinged. Short, long we, story. Why are we going to long story short? Well, this, this is a is, good story. It is a good story. This is your long format to tell the story. They, well, and like he was saying, like, it's it's, tar it's an unbalanced family. And the, the deeper, even Ryan had done some more research for me. He like really dove into it. And he found their business address. He found out the business is registered in Texas. So even with everything that's going on, like, they can't yeah. like ants. There's an anti. They don't know we're from law. Texas. Yeah. They don't understand that we understand anti-snap 
Thank you, Rick Perry. Yeah. These people, they're from Kansas. They're trying to pretend to be Texans. And they don't even understand the laws in which the entity that they created and started, mm -hmm. they don't understand the laws for yeah. Texas. So they want to sit there and tell you, you're not allowed to say anything. Yeah. Anti-SNAP, guys, if you're from Texas, it's so a company cannot sue you for giving your honest opinion about it. Now, you can't go and slander a business like we have not slandered. All mm -hmm. we've done is show exactly what yeah. we have been given. Exactly. And then the more people from their family that contact us, <laughs> the more we're able to like just put these pieces oh, yeah. together. And I kind of feel like... Um, Oh, what's catfish. his name? Catfish. What's we his name? Neve and Max. At the time, we were like binging all the new catfish, uh, the new catfish season. And so we were like going into our Facebook and we're like, oh, are they related to you? What are these pictures? Yeah, man. Where are they from? Yep. We were like, bam, bam, bam. We found we like, his uh, Twitter account, his Facebook. We found all something companies. from when he tried to be a realtor um, Open a restaurant. in Kansas back in the day. Like that email that he's used, I don't think he realizes how much that's attached to. No. Embarrassingly enough is all I'll say. So uh, yeah, I was gonna say we found quite a embarrassingly lot. enough we found, that email was attached to a lot. Be careful what you put online. Yeah, absolutely. Be <laughs> careful which which email you use when you threaten somebody. Yeah. So basically, I uh, we took all this information and then we found, found her. We found hold her. on. We found her license number. Right. All her pharmacy license information. She was a licensed pharmacist in Kansas and Missouri. So we submitted uh, complaint forms via each pharmacy board in each state, uh, quoting a, quite a few of the their code of ethics for pharmacists. Yep. Um, in there, showing how uh, specifically where she was not doing what she's supposed to be doing as a pharmacist, instead of like, and she even like told me how unintelligent and uneducated I was, even though she gave me that information. Right after admitting yeah, she gave She was like, you need to knowledge. read these correctly. I'm like, hold on a second. You wouldn't have even known this wasn't even right unless I would have fucking said something you know and it's well, like that's how they found out it was incorrect yeah, what she you gave should you should be thanking me yep. and saying hey thank you so much for catching that like this whole thing could have been this whole thing could have been handled so differently like she could have said like okay i had one company um they were fantastic to, yeah they were fantastic okay i hit them i did my, my you're review. really loud in that microphone it I sounds like you it. keep I'm jumping you are very much getting excited so I posted a review about this company um, a few months ago, and it was actually a month before this other situation happened. And uh, uh, they had said, oh, yeah, we are uh, actually, you know, hey, you know, good to know that you're doing all this stuff. Like, we are actually doing pesticide testing. And I had hit him up. I said, oh, yeah, absolutely. I said, and I definitely uh, understand that, and I do know that. Um, but however, your representative wasn't able to supply that, but I did let them know as soon as they were able to supply that information, I would update, you know, or I would, you know, I would take that information. Basically, they talked to you like a human. They yeah. didn't treat you like crap. They didn't right. try to belittle you. They didn't talk about your education. No. But yet this education that you have mm. exposed exactly right. who this was. And right. more people have contacted you yes. because of these articles. Go to the comment section on this company on my, on my page on the crabshomestead.com. And the board even knows about these now. Now the board knows customers. about it. They've, they've received it. We got an email. They've received it. So now we're just going to see what happens. So again, um, if you want to come after us, don't come after us. Just communicate with us. Talk to us. Talk. We're humans just like you. We're nobody different. My disclaimer don't even Don't come says at me that. yelling, screaming. Doctor. Don't come at me just negative. Yeah. Don't come at me sideways. Don't come at me with an agenda. If you want something, talk to me. Communicate. Right. Don't sit there screaming at me. Don't threaten me. Uh, I'm not the guy you want to threaten. Mm -hmm. You know, when you threaten me, that makes me, ooh, let's do this. Right. I definitely want to ease way harder into let's see how far we can take this. Because exactly. this is about to get fun. Yeah. So that's been really interesting for that business. And we haven't even sold anything yet. This is all just research. I'm well, educating. You're, yeah, you're not a business. I'm not a business. I'm literally educating people. I'm On just, your journey of discovery. Yes, on my own journey. This is my journey of figuring out what companies are good. And I'm going to tell you what. Um, you do not have to take my advice. You can do your own research. Um, but I have contacted these companies. I have emailed them. And on my site, it has... Like I said, I'm be posting. I'll be posting one a week, every week. I have like 14, so go check it out. <laughs> There's quite a few, and like I said, I am recommending you know hitmeds.com. So as of now, but that, that, then it again, might change. It, it might change. change. This is what's the, you know June. It's the beginning yeah. of June, and that's kind of like that's basically what we've been doing. We've been focusing on yeah. It's been a, a quite. Nietzsche is walking all over my lap. Um, if you're on YouTube and you're watching this podcast, you'll see this craziness. 
But um, we've just been trying to get all of our business mindset together. We've 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 got the education. Now we're just wait like we're just looking for opportunities, and they're just jumping out at us. Really. Yeah. No. Seriously, they are. Really? It's um. If anything, they're just teaching us a little step more every yes. single time. Every time that you know, shoot, I mean, I've wanted to quit this thing a dozen times, and there's been many reasons too. Yeah. But every time I'm like, all right, you know what? That's it. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing this anymore. Like this has just gotten insane. Like, oh, but wait, there's more. <laughs> just like the negotiate. And again, once I started looking at negotiations yes. as a discovery process, I look at everything now as a discovery process. What can I learn from that? Because you know, I also like that saying, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. But that's how you get the knowledge is through the discovery process, the yes. journey that you're going to take. The just asking these random questions, or even in different conversations, I would. I call it my Doug Flutie Hail Mary, okay? I would just throw this Hail Mary pass, right? And it had nothing to do with the conversation. I'm trying to think specifically right now about one. Um, I can't specifically, but I wanted to find something out. Oh, that's what it was. So I told this guy that, you know, oh, hey, I'm going to do this. and Or this is what I'm working on now. And the guy, it had nothing to do with... Um, any of that you know what we were talking about he just throws out oh by the way we also offer this by the way we also have this right. by the way i don't know if you're you, you know you know this but it just opened enough of a door for him it just made his puzzle pieces click together click together and say hey this plus that i can tell him that mm -hmm. and so we have just found so much knowledge just by accident just by saying the something when i first was negotiating with uh my first one her name was kelly and kelly thought i was the biggest idiot she had to have it was so bad she seriously kept saying rapid fire on this uh text i got from her sir please understand mm -hmm. sir please understand like every other sentence that's all it said sir please understand so it made me think hey you know what i need to reflect on what i'm doing like what I really don't know what I'm doing, so I get I'm not understanding. So what is it that I'm not understanding? Right. So one night I stayed up all night and I started watching documentaries about uh, Chinese manufacturing. And, you know, it was kind of funny to learn. I used to think of it as, like, oh, everyone's just chained to a desk. It's not it at all. They're almost like the working class, the middle class of, what, the 50s and 60s. They're very yeah. much into their work. They're very proud of their products. And you are using an assembly line of somebody that can make 10 to 30,000 products a day, possibly 60,000 in a day. So if you're looking at coffee makers, right. 60,000, some of these can produce in a day, 30,000. Obviously don't have the space for 30,000 coffee pots, which is why negotiating for us is such a big deal because we are in a bus. So when this lady kept telling me, sir, please understand, and then I actually went to go understand, because obviously I was missing something for right. her to say it every other sentence. Yeah. The, red flag, red flag. <laughs> the, um, I keep oh, throwing sorry, me, you I keep interrupting me when I'm talking throughout, so I don't know where I'm going, but yeah. You, she just kept telling you to please understand, and you, we'll were, move you on. didn't it's understand. Gone. But it was basically like you just have to talk to them differently than you would an, like an American manufacturer. He had to like change his whole way he spoke. well because the way we speak you know is different and i don't know how it's coming through if she has a translator you know uh, um, online and maybe these are half words coming in because mm. maybe what i'm saying doesn't transfer over to mandarin or cantonese so i didn't even think of that or maybe they do speak english i don't know but i, I know, know that some of the conversations that i get on my end they're very much you're you're, you're some of them you're piecing together what this person is trying to say and so you have to confirm a lot or, you know, is this what you're saying? And, you know, sometimes they get a little offended by it and they say, well, yes, of course, please understand. <laughs> so, oh, okay. That's why, I, you know, reiterated what I said. So now at least when I hear, please understand, I know what this person's saying. It really sucks because it was a good story I had for all that I'm too. sorry. Nobody's I planned that for this. It. Yeah. It took him a lot. It did, did take a lot longer to communicate. So what more do you want to talk about? Oh, I wanted to talk about next with the negotiating, like basically going into that was uh, we're actually going to our next opportunity while working on these businesses. We're actually going to a work camping gig. We're going to run a fireworks stand. Yeah, we negotiated yep. a new deal on that as well. Because so. we didn't plan on doing this. This wasn't a thing we planned on doing this summer. I didn't want to do it. But we got, again, Especially now, to yeah. I have my time and everything else. I mean, if we wouldn't have negotiated what we did, 
it wouldn't be worth our time. We'd be losing yes. money actually going to it. So it we worked had, out. We had like our wish want walk. And I don't think that's something a lot of people don't really know know to do. Yeah. On the list. And Ryan did a really good job of, we just kind of sat down and figured out what is it worth our time. Um, Cause it's three. And don't weeks. get in a hurry when you're negotiating guys and girls, uh, women, it don't get in a rush. I used to think you always had to have an answer now for something. You don't, you don't at all. Uh, I actually like taking my time now, slowing it down. So yeah, don't get in a rush. Discovery phase. You, you just talked about that. If you're in a rush, you're not learning anything from that other person. Mm -hmm. It's fun too, actually, when you're negotiating, you'll find when they don't look at it as a discovery process. And it's actually, you can use that to your advantage. It's just like a judo move. Use their weight, use their strength, their power against them. Roll with it. You know, let them feel that they're in power. And then at the very end, you're able to roll it because of what you have discovered. So somebody that wants to go by force and use a negotiation as force, um, it's actually fun to watch how I was on that opposite side because now that person's going to tell you a whole lot. They're going to open up a lot more doors for you to enter and start picking at. So, yeah. That's good. I think that was a really good analogy with the jujitsu stuff, I think. Um, because you're right, just rolling with it, really. Yamicho's on the table. I think he's missing the kids. The kids are out at, um, we dropped them off yesterday over summer camp. to go to summer camp. By the time this episode comes out, they'll be home, but we have a week without the kids and the animals are already restless. It's only been like a day and they're like needing attention immediately. So, but yeah, so thanks to all our, the negotiatings that Ryan's been doing and then all the that. Books all that we've read. The, we have a lot of puzzle pieces coming together yes. right now in our life yep. where it's always been a piece of the puzzle. Thank you. It was just never... Um, two pieces put together and now these two pieces are making a bigger picture and it's kind of like we had all of our edges of this puzzle all built out <laughs> now we're starting to like add in all the middle pieces so that's really smart though because the we've books. been doing the books you know and then like just our own experience talking to these people like that's the outer edges now we're filling it in with actual viable business ideas sure because not even like strategies like Ryan was saying earlier, there's like a minimum quantity of some of the stuff that we have to order. So the biggest... I never got to that, actually. Oh, you didn't? Well, yeah, yeah. we were talking about the 30,000 pieces, but it's like, we can't have all that stuff in here. So what's the best way for us to do this? And like he said, anybody can do this. You just have to go out and want to do it and like learn. You need the balls to yeah. just make yourself look ridiculous. And that's what <laughs> I was trying to get to earlier was, you know, when I say that everywhere now is an uncomfortable position for me. I don't mean that as in a, uh, it's a negative. It's a, you have to run towards that because if you always stay in that dance that you understand and that groove is just something that you know, oh, hey, when this happens, I do this. Well, now I say I'm in an uncomfortable position because I don't know what comes next. I'm really not wargaming this out anymore. It's just seriously discovering. I throw something out. I see what I get back. I analyze that and then see what I can use that with. So there's no more wargaming. Well, if this does this, then I'm going to do that. And if they say this, then I'm going to. And if this happens, then I'm going to. That's gone. Those days are gone. And thank God they're gone with me mm -hmm. because, one, it's kind of hard um, just to try to keep track of that. And it's a lot of stress. Yeah. And then when you're negotiating, you're only allowing your side to give away all the goodies. You're not listening to everything else that you could be learning from somebody else. So, yeah. Always let them throw out the number first. Mm, yeah yeah i've learned let that, that happen yeah that's true let them do that even if they throw out a number you don't have to say yeah or nay to it take your time that book was all about there's you know you can say it about three different times mm. yeah you know you can you can use um what is it calibrated questioning about three different times before you even give a number back and i've actually had that happen where people have given multiple numbers before i even gave a number mm -hmm. so on that trailer yeah he was actually in the middle of reading that book when we sold the flatbed. Oh, I think I just finished yeah. it or I was at the end. Yeah. yeah. And you were actually able to use the practices and we got exactly what we wanted for it. And it actually yeah. was only like the trailers three years old. It was old. the cheapest rental fee for that thing yeah. ever. Yeah, absolutely. So we made our money back. It was like what we bought it for. So it We've had it for what, two, three years? Three years and, yeah, I think three you know, years. we only lost a hundred dollars than what we actually bought it for. So yeah. we just didn't That's need pretty anymore. good. Yeah. And you know, again with this lifestyle, you're kinda of, you don't have the space, so you gotta get rid of stuff. And we've always been really good at selling. 
Uh, ever since really we've started minimalizing all of our stuff, we took on like that pallet business from Amazon. Yeah, it, it was like a liquidation thing, and like that was just fun. Yeah, we fixed some stuff. We we fucking sold it. We made our money back. We kept some of the stuff. We yeah, used we some of the stuff. We used yeah. the ninja or the the blender or whatever that was. Because ours was broke. Yeah, the magic bullet. Yeah. I always want to call it silver bullet, but that's a fucking. Somebody story. blew that fucking thing up. They look like they made like a blueberry <laughs> smoothie. <laughs> Yeah, man. We got and in there and cleaned it all. With I had to take it all up. apart, clean the springs and everything. And it worked. Like a champ, man. Dude, it totally worked. So we just kept it. We didn't even sell it. They just didn't clean it. Yeah. But we were selling so much stuff. We're like, we can fucking sell anything. And we did. And we literally have. We have sold all kinds of things now. speedboat, like used baby <sighs> monitors. Like there were so much leap pads. Then we yeah. would piece out things. Like if things didn't work, that was one of the biggest lessons when you're selling stuff. Is yeah. Like, piece it out these leap pads we had that didn't work we took the stylus and the battery compartments off and we sold those in pieces even just the lanyard was the lanyard. a hot ticket item yeah yeah yep. the battery covers dude my kids had leap pads at the time they were missing battery covers so i totally understand yeah. when the guy was like piece it out and he literally was in the back yep. had a bunch of workers back there piecing out shit and that's all they did they put us on ebay and everything so mm -hmm. if you're looking for shit to sell and something doesn't work fucking piece it out yep Legos, absolutely Legos, I just learned about, is a big deal. There's so many kids with Lego sets missing that one piece or two or three pieces that you need. But And some other kid might have it. So if you have a set your kids aren't using, take some pictures of them. Take a picture of what that set's with. There is literally going to be somebody there that might need that specific piece because they want to finish this thing. So What was it, that popular me science, popular, popular mechanics? Popular mechanics. Yeah. Popular, maybe it's popular mechanics and popular science. It's both. But this Doesn't guy matter. was cutting out articles and selling them on eBay. Just the article. Because it was so detailed. And he would sell it for like $5. Well, they have good articles. I mean, they really have phenomenal articles. articles. And the magazine back that, you know, he's cutting out of didn't even cost $5. Oh, my God. It, it was like a buck. 10, yeah, 10 yeah. cents maybe. You know? I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> but anyway, so just the opportunities are there. We're going to be traveling to Tucson. Again, it's three weeks of work. It's going to be hot, but it's totally worth our time. It's actually going to fund the businesses that we're working on right now, which is really exciting because now we can keep seeking other investment opportunities. Um, and a big part of this podcast is getting all those opportunities out there, not just ours, but other people's. Other people's, so yeah. So if you guys want to be interviewed for this podcast to get your business out there, contact the 80 us, let us know. that watch this or listen to this. <laughs> They're gonna see it, and they might buy something. You never know. But uh, we have we have a few more than that. But still, but yeah, let us know if you know somebody that might want to talk about their business. Hit us up, uh, the Crabs Homestead at yahoo.com. Go to the website. Uh, you can email me. You can go on Facebook, Instant Messenger, whatever. We're gonna con. There's nobody else working here. It's just us. You're gonna get a hold of us. Yeah, me or Ryan. <laughs> Usually, it's me. <laughs> If it's social media, it's definitely you. It's me. It's um, never me. But we're totally happy to help spread those messages. We want to hear people's stories. We want to hear their struggles and because we build from that. That's like our 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 food. Yeah. You know, we're like, yeah, tell me how you struggle. Tell me about your quote unquote failures. Because I don't believe in failures. You know, it's kind of embarrassing too though. Like when it you is. when you bring that up, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people they've asked us to be more honest about you know, the failures and I mean, we, I mean, shit, we've talked about tons of our failures. I thought, yeah. you know, um, I think it's our attitude about them, but you know, there's a lot that I guess maybe we haven't talked about, you know, on this and just like every step of the way, I guess like throughout the day, you'd, uh, it would be content for you. I mean, shit, I have failed. I don't know. Countless times already just working this, uh, DTS. So yeah. it's pretty cool. Uh, Ryan and I, my, our oldest daughter, yeah. you know, she's becoming a, uh, Photoshop wizard. She's mm -hmm. using um, Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, Lightroom now. They're, uh, both of our daughters are looking at trying to work Flash, I think is what it's called now, Adobe Flash yeah. for animation for this DTS. Yep. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, my oldest daughter, she's been working on the logos with me. She's been doing a lot of your Cannababe stuff. Yes. Um, she has become so, 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 so good at using... Uh, the different Adobe mm -hmm. products. So I'm pretty excited for her. She has a, what is it called? That thing she has, she started. Oh, she can a help Fiverr account. Fiverr, yeah, she has a Fiverr account now. Yep, if anybody's um, interested in maybe having her do some graphics, yep. you can go check out my Cannababe site. You yeah. Know, anything that has at uh, like the Constellation or Ryan Crabtree. What's her name? BD Imagery? Oh. BD Imagery? Yeah. 
or BDI, BD imagery? BD imagery it's or for BDI. beautiful day imagery is what it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so she's working on that. Or and BDI. she, this is her first logo. It looks bad fucking ass. Um, she did my logo for Cannabid, my, my, so it's not her first one. logo. That's she's right. on a couple logos now. But this is her first, I guess, real detailed one because you this has gotten into shadowing. She's actually had to use all yeah. three programs oh, for, yeah. this, for this logo. So oh, it's yeah. not an easy, this is not an easy logo. Not like my Cannabid. This is much more difficult. I mean, it's not super hard, but it, but I mean, her. I can't make it. Yes, yeah, so I'm saying like, I, I can't don't know make how this. It is definitely hard. It's hard for me. Yeah. You know, and. And here's one thing too, um, she's able to use Adobe Creative Cloud folks because um, if you are a student, a uh, college student, or if you're homeschooled, you can get a student discount. And I'm, I'm sure it's for public school too, but you can get a student discount, it's $20 a month for Adobe Creative Cloud, and that's all the programs, way cheaper to do it that way. So anyway, and if anybody's interested, totally check it out, 20 bucks. And my kids love it. Layla's been really liking doing animation too. So we're trying to basically get everybody in the business in some way because yep. that's what we're fucking doing this for. It's for we're doing family. it for, yeah, absolutely. And we want them to have those skills and that's their homeschool. So people are always like, well, do y'all do like six subjects a day? No, no, fuck no, because they're doing real life stuff. They're doing real work. Yeah. Real life work. Stuff that actually matters. Right. You know that right. kid in the class, it's like, but when are we going to use this? Shut the fuck up, kid. <laughs> yeah. They are Our kid actually them. uses, you know, the things right. that we teach them. So yes. it's things that are going to help them in life. Yeah. They don't understand it just because you tell them to do it. They right. understand it because, oh, this is why I need to know this. Right. And yeah. she's our artist. She loves to draw. Uh, yeah. She really got excited when she found out how all the different things that she can do with it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we both tried to get them on the codeacademy.org when they were younger to code. And they kind of didn't. Ryan did. Yeah, she finished it. Got she learned it. HTML. Uh, Code Academy is yeah. really good if you've never heard of that. CodeAcademy.com. I don't think so. Or CodeAcademy.org. It I might be it now a part of MIT, but I doubt it. Um, it, it I believe it was its own thing. Um, yeah. And it, shoot, it was tiny when I got in it. It was. It was. And it was now probably bigger back then at 2012 when yeah. I used it than what it was when it first came out. You know what? But She's cool. actually still coding on Khan Academy, too. They do some Khan Academy coding, and so she actually does do that. But she has gotten really more into the picture side. So we're just trying to do something for everybody. And we want to hear from all you small business owners because it's Absolutely. kind of like, you know, we've closed a business before, and it wasn't because we failed. It's just because it wasn't working for what we were going to do. It was a hobby. It was a hobby. Like Mr. Wonderful says, yeah. we worked it long enough and found out this isn't a real business. Yeah. It's a hobby. We it's something we like to do. Hundreds of dollars. We were making hundreds of dollars. I love what he tens says that. Tens of dollars. We were making tens of dollars. We were making a little money. It wasn't a lot. But I had some really great supportive friends, and I learned a lot. Um, and this next round... Um, I really hope we can, and my job really lately, Ryan's really been doing all the business stuff. I've really just been focusing on the marketing and the social media stuff and <clears throat> trying to get followers and even doing the sticker giveaways if y'all haven't been. Our yeah, you need to get on those sales, lady. We're about to have all kinds of gear, and and, and we have you're merch. not selling the, the t-shirts, the stickers. We have stickers. you guys. Go to our crabshomestead.com for Help her out, shop. America. Help we her out. Show him that She's I can slapping. sell something. I'm just basically, right now we just have the t-shirts. I know not everybody wants a t-shirt, but. It sounds like you have excuses after excuses yeah, after excuses. that are for like two bucks. You better help her out, America. <laughs> She's have, looking bad. We're going to have some actual gear you'll want to use and buy. This and gear is going to be badass. I'm so excited. I just need, I'm practicing with the Crabs Homestead. So hopefully this BTS will, will blow up. And that's kind yeah. of what I'm hoping. I'm hoping our fans will share it. I'm hoping they'll help us spread the word because that's really all it is. We just need to get in front of people. Yeah. I'm begging y'all. And even if you don't <laughs> use it, maybe you know somebody that yeah. can use it. But you know what I've kind of been Hunters. excited about? And this is something that I've been... Um, so this is kind of off topic, but very much on topic. You know, we are having more school shootings. And so where um, defense... Uh, tactical solutions comes from is we want to be about defense and tactical solutions um you know every time i hear about one of these you know uh the what, are the, what do they call them active shooter situations yeah. mm -hmm. or a school shooting um you know where is this that the simple technology that we americans because we are smart people where is this technology just that anybody can use to throw in to one of these classrooms and so right now we're also working with uh, engineers and people to stop some of these 
uh, shootings and active uh, shooter situations by offering one, some gear. We're looking also uh, talking to some manufacturers that do bulletproofing uh, different, right. uh, so bulletproof armor. Yeah. Um, and it's not always going to be so thick. We found people with very, very small. So maybe mm -hmm. on some of these backpacks, having mm -hmm. it as an insert, that way at least you have something right. instead of nothing. Um, we're working with some on, there are, um, what are they, hoodies mm -hmm. uh, with a three alpha armor level. Yeah. And so, what is that too? I think it takes up to five, five, six. I don't know. I think is what it is. Or 44 Magnum. I mean, a 44 Magnum is fucking huge. Well, I feel like it's, and everybody's like, oh, it's like, well, do we really have to think like that right now? Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Yeah, because Your this is a, free, no, 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 because yeah. it's a free nation. Yeah. And people have the right to yep. do whatever they want to do. You don't have the right to be safe. No. Nope. You just have the right. right to protect yourself. So again, defense, tactical solutions. And again, so we're working with, like I said, some of these people that, uh, you know, are coming up with ideas for raising and lowering using springs. So that way you don't need power. We're talking about, you know, ways to shut doors uh, in schools. Uh, so this DTS is starting off just right now. It's going to have just equipment, just gear yeah. right now. But the defense part is coming. And, you know, we're talking, like I said, with a couple people to come up and design some of these products. And we're talking with some manufacturers in the United States that are going to be able to manufacture this for us. So, and, you know, I, I'm just kind of excited to what can we solve? We, we said here we like problem solvers. Yeah. Okay, we're, We are master problem solvers. That's what this box created so yeah i mean what better way you know to start a company that's all about solutions let's solve these issues exactly. and because again you do not have a right to be safe nobody has that right but you do have the right to protect yourself you do have the right to make yourself safe mm -hmm. but nobody needs to make it safe for you so the founding father said if you are to give up a little bit of or give up your liberty for a little bit of security, security you deserve neither well, you'll get neither, and you deserve yeah, none. Yeah. Yeah. Which I agree with. Because you can't vote away your rights in order yeah. to make yourself safer. It's no. just, yeah. It's like those x-ray scanners at the airport, y'all. Yep. Are they really stopping terrorists? I, I don't no. know. No. Not, not I don't think get, so. Not when you hear those stories of little ladies getting molested or the kids on the no-fly list. Like, come on. It's government. It's fucked up. You know what I mean? Speaking of government fucked up, there was that thing I saw on World Star today about it was an army veteran that he was in a New York County jail, I believe is what it was. And I don't know his crime, I don't know the backstory to it, but where it gets fucky is the parents were saying they're they're holding a press conference and they were smart. I've noticed a lot of families are doing this now. Yeah. Uh whenever someone in their family dies, they don't go with whatever the county coroner states they get their own independent mm -hmm. third party review of the body well come to find out the it was missing body parts so first off i don't know what this person went to jail for um but didn't make it that long into their stint in jail or whatever and all of a sudden they were dead because of self-inflicted wounds but the the head was smashed so bad what? that basically it you know this they would have stopped well before because, hey, I'm bleeding or, hey, I might have probably knocked myself unconscious at the time. Dude. But when the body parts, you know, were missing, like uh, he was missing a throat, he was missing a heart, and he was missing, I don't know, a lung. What the fuck? And I could be wrong about that, but it was a heart for sure, it was a throat for sure, the and there was something else. Why are you missing body parts already, and why don't the fam why doesn't the family have any kind of closure? Why don't they really understand what happened? This is really crazy. That's just kind of fucking crazy. You go into county, now your face is bashing in, and, like, and you're missing body parts? What the fuck? It's crazy. Dude, that is crazy. That... My lord, dude. What is this country coming to? Mm -hmm. But, well... I and mean, again, defense, tactical solutions. Yeah. We're not about the violence, though. Yeah. You know, and the company's logo, or the saying is, si vis pacem parabellum. And what that means is, if you wish for peace, prepare for war. As long as you are, and again, this doesn't mean actual war. If you right. are going to war with your business, meaning I have this business idea, you're going to go to war with the world in order to make that a reality. Yeah. So if you want peace, prepare to go to war. Prepare to do what you need to do for anything, whatever it is. If it's, you know, just, hey, I'm going to be first in line at the Six Flags, you know, roller coaster. Yeah. You better be ready to run and sprint there. That's your yeah. war. You better get there first. Like, you got to prepare for so it. So whatever it is, prepare. So. And 
it's really encompassing part of our lifestyle ultimately we don't we don't want to peddle crap that we're not going to use Absolutely. we don't want to peddle stuff that we're not interested in We've always been interested in this with Ryan's military background. And well, like, growing up in the South, yeah, too. Yeah, growing up in the South, always being prepared for hurricanes and tornadoes. and like It just fucking... teaches you to think ahead. It's just not about being a prepper. It's about no. just thinking ahead, thinking about, okay, it's about being proactive, not, no, stop. I'm sorry. It's about being proactive, not being reactive. Yes. And everybody wants to be reactive after the fact of what well, we need to do. Well, why don't you plan beforehand? Right. If you wish for peace, prepare for war. Whatever, again, your war is. If you have a test in English, that's your war. That test in English. You better study your ass off, and you better be prepared for this, you know, test that you're about to battle out. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just like that with everything. There's no crazy inside scoop to it. It's just that simple. Mm -hmm. Prepare, or you're planning to fail. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So... But yeah, keep your eyes out for that um, because that's kind of exciting. It's basically everything that we're working on, um, and then we'll be leaving. We're preparing right now for this business, all the yeah. books that we've read. You know, this yeah. was our war now, so that's what we're fighting. Absolutely. All these different, every time we get a no, all right, but how do I get a yes? Or they won't do this? Okay, what will they do? You yes. know, so I've noticed that too in the negotiations. It's never um exactly what we wanted so we'll you know plan some a couple scenarios out mm -hmm. and we've been able to work things into at least one of our you know hypothetical scenarios of well if they won't do this maybe we can get them to there and we always end up at least yeah. doing that we always end up on the right side of it it's mm -hmm. never just a flat out no it's never exactly what we no. wanted but it's through the discovery through learning about what this person can do for us Oh, you know what? I can turn this into this and do this. Oh, yeah, that works. Okay. So. If you're a person that needs it your way every single time, then you're going to be really shitty at negotiating. Ooh, you're going to be just it's gonna sad. Suck. You're going to be, you're gonna you're be, gonna be sad. sad a lot. You're going to be miserable all the time, and you're never going to see anything positive in anything that you've done or worked out for yourself because yeah. you. Because none of these worked out 100% for not, us. It's not. Yeah. You, the best negotiations or the best deals are made are both people are not 100% happy but you are getting what you wanted again, which is why you go to a wish, a want and a walk. Explain that to people for a little so bit. So your wish is okay. So if there's something you want to sell, for instance, and you have a minimum that you want to sell it for. So you're like, I'm going to wish, let's say for a thousand dollars. I want $800, but I'm going to for sure walk no lower than 750. I can't go lower than 750. That's your walk. If that person does not come to that, and you know for sure because of your research, whatever, you know that that is the number, those are your numbers, then if it hit any one of those, you're happy. That's your happy place. Wish, want, walk. And you'll fight All for each one of those spots. If it's not that, then wait. If you know in your heart that that's what it's worth, then that's what it's worth. And you stick with that and you be confident. I don't know how many times we've gotten... The trailer, or someone looked at your bike, right? We thought they were going to buy it. They didn't buy it. The next guy came and was like, I fucking want it. Yeah, and I don't you know? believe anymore either in that, you know, oh, hurry, act now. No. That's horseshit marketing. It is. And that's making you jump into a bad decision Impulse. because every single time somebody has tried to get me to hurry, act now, we'll just say in the last six months. Yeah. Every And it's happened mm -hmm. quite a few months. It's probably happened more this past six months. And it's happened ever in my life. Like they want you to hop and pop. But for this man, deal. every time I have just waited and just told them, hey, if it's if it's that kind of a deal, then I'll politely decline because I'm not that interested mm -hmm. in those kind of deals. Yeah. They it's immediately change their tune. They take you a little more serious. And I think that's you taking yourself more serious of, well, I'm not prepared to do anything right now. And so if it is an act now, hey, I missed this opportunity and that's yep. fine then it wasn't my opportunity at that time. Right. And so since I finally got out of that, I need to hurry up and do this now. Nah, it doesn't matter. If you feel rushed making a decision, it's not a good decision. A business decision. Yeah. Yeah, a business decision. Don't be rushed. If you're rushed, no. Just take your time. And if it was a real honest uh, opportunity for you, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, there's no time limit on it. I mean, yeah. yes, you, you're going to have to make your mind up on sure. something. So please understand the context. If they need it in the next 15 seconds, it's not your opportunity. No, thank you. You're being rushed to make a bad decision. Now, if you wait, you know, a month from now, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, you might have missed your opportunity. 
But if it's in right now, I need this answer. Just tell them, no, thank you. Thank you. But no, thank no. you. Uh, I guess this isn't my opportunity. And then move on your day. And that's honestly how not telling a lot of these manufacturers just flat out no. Right. And just saying, well, maybe in the future. I've had people give me their uh, product catalogs. I've had them give me promotional offers. Prices, just yeah. from saying no in the very beginning of not not a flat out no, but a yeah. learn how to say no without actually saying the words <laughs> no. And I've gotten people to, again, already start lowering prices and well, here you get this promotion offer. Now here's our super promotion offer. Here's our rock bottom price offers. And there are situations so, where people are going to respect you for saying no. You know, like we said no to the first offer for our fireworks gig, you know, and that was appreciated. And like if we weren't going to get, we basically offered our walk. And if we weren't going to get it, then we gave Well, because time. honestly, we didn't have time to sit yeah. there and really mess around. No. And it was... This is going to have to be a quicker negotiation, yes. but again, we'll walk away from it if we need to, right. because... But we gave him time. It's fun, but it's not, but it's, I'm going to lose money right. in this process. Don't be scared to tell somebody, let me go home and talk to my wife about it, or let me go home and yeah. think about it. Let me go home and think about this and I'll get back with you tomorrow. We've or, actually watched yeah. people get upset that we on the other end of the line, or, yeah. you know... We've it's it's fun to see the physical side of when somebody wasn't ready for that or didn't want that. They wanted yeah. you to hurry up and get Answer into a bad decision. It. Yes. So sorry, I meant to I didn't mean to do that, but I think that's important for people to understand too. It is. That there was disgust from our end, there has been a couple times because we decided to take our time. Yeah. But again, we didn't jump in anything bad. I feel good about it. And I feel fantastic every, about yeah, every deal every we've done Every single lately. deal that we've done, I feel great about it. Um, oh, and we got so many we have to do. I have <laughs> one right now. I'm going to have to... Uh, I need to get some pricing down by about 15% across the board. Now, that's a lot of money. Um, it's $0.72 here, or $0.72 cents here. There's, there's $9 on a product there. but So 15% is going to be a lot, and I'm pretty nervous about having that conversation yeah so right now a month before i even get into this um you know we're already laying the groundwork for the negotiations later yeah. so yeah yeah that's true so sometimes it is it's a strategy think of the those uh game of thrones or the spartacus yeah. or those kinds of movies where you know you have these political parties and they're just kind of they're both trying to get their way so you're playing the game a certain way and in all honesty, I don't get that nefarious. I don't really mm -hmm. care to do that. But I'm not as blunt as I used to either. Um, so there is a mixture of now just honestly, I just need people to tell me what's going to work for them. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what's really going to work for me. Right. And I've now come to the understanding of not every deal is going to be a deal that's made. And you have to be able to. I think reading Trump's book uh, really taught me that one. It gave me the confidence to not every deal needs to be made first off. Or not every deal is going to work out in your favor. So that's just not the right deal for the right time. Right. So, Logan, but I'm nervous for that one. It's coming up. Well, and I was going to say too, like Logan also taught me, um, yep. one of our friends, Logan taught me that. Oh, Logie Bear. Yeah. You know, your ideas and your time, your brain is priceless. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think of the best way. Like he, he, you couldn't just be like, hey, Logan, come help me. Like, he had to want to do that. And so when he came out, I really valued his opinion and the time he was taking to give yep. us advice and draw on the bus. You'd keep him fed. Yeah, I mean, I, I would feed give him, him dinner, alcohol. We'd give him some beer. You know, yep. like, we always catered to that good side. But he taught me that my time is valuable. That's fact, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm sweating. I'm building this bus. I'm doing this fucking work. Yeah. And putting it out there for people mm -hmm. to see. Yeah. So if you have a question, I'm happy to answer, but don't waste my time because Absolutely. I had things to do. Absolutely. If you want, it's and I get okay. If anybody heard of Handy Bob on WordPress, he it's sounds fantastic. like a grumpy old man on He's WordPress. Awesome. He's fucking amazing. We love Bob, and, um, Robert, and he he really also taught me. Like he would tell me all the time how people would reach out to him wanting advice on their solar, and then turned around and they're just like. Don't even do it. They take it to a dealer and they contact him and they're like, oh my God, I just spent 20 grand on this solar system. And this doesn't and work. How do I fix work. it? And he's like, nope, sorry. I already I tried told you. To do it. I'm not going to tell you how to take all this shit out and do it again. Like I've already fucking told you. 
you're either asking somebody for their advice because they're an expert or they know something about that in that field. Or they just know more than you. That's why you're or asking the question. they just know more. Yeah. And take it or not, I there's tons of advice we didn't take. Yeah. There's tons of advice we didn't take. I got tired of people offering advice. But a lot of times, and, and it was always from people that had never built a bus before, by the way. Like, it's not like these people were professional bus builders and were offering us advice. These were people in Home Depot that were like, you should put shutters on the bus. You should do this on the bus. And it's like, eh. Same with negotiating. There is no such thing, a professional bus builder. <laughs> There's a lot of people that have worked on a lot of buses that would like to call themselves professional bus builders. But anybody who has built one bus, you are a professional <laughs> bus builder. Okay? You've already done it more than about 99.99% Absolutely. Absolutely. of America. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Give yourself credit. If you're listening to this podcast, you probably built a bus or did Or a tiny house. A tiny yeah, house. yeah, yeah, yeah. So give yourself that credit and know that your time is valuable. Just yeah, people absolutely. are reaching out to you because of that. So, yep. you know, I love giving away all this information for free and I do. Um, I'm ready now to make some money from it though. I really am. Like, I don't mind giving out. Remember our... just the shipping options freaked us out when we first started this? Oh my God. There were so many types and we didn't understand what FOB meant, DDP. On the, on the manufacturing. We didn't know stuff, what MOQ yeah. was. There's a lot of acronyms. You know what Kiyosaki taught us? If you want to, you know, learn the vocabulary. Yeah. If you want to, you know, dabble in an industry, learn the vocabulary. Yeah. Because as soon as I learned the vocabulary. You knew the right questions. Too. And that was what I was going to say about Kelly earlier as well. Is she was the person I would bounce all the, when I didn't know how to ask something. Um, she was the one, please, sir, understand. Uh, every time I wanted to ask the stupid question because I just needed to know the answer. She was the one I would go try it on, and then I would learn, oh, you ask like this, or this is what I meant to say. I would take that to other um, uh, manufacturers. And so the more I started to do that, it was the more it just became part of my vocabulary. Yeah. When they would, you know, honestly, the more I started to learn of the vocabulary, when I would go back to previous negotiations, I would look and reread, hey, where did we get to this? Oh man, they even said this. I completely missed that because I didn't know that vocabulary. I didn't know what that word meant even. So I just saw it and it was one of those words. I was like, big word, don't know it. Let's keep moving and cruising and moved on. And so it is kind of neat just the looking back process too. And, and so if you're going to do something, just put your fucking blinders on, put your rain slicker on, keep, you know, so no, don't listen to anybody. Just move head first. Yeah. Keep learning, keep making mistakes, fell, fell again. Fell early, fell and often, from them. because we are both failures every single day working on these things. Yeah. We've tried so I much. I don't get enough done that I think I'm going to get done, or I don't answer learning. enough people. Yeah. Or, and this whole social media algorithm thing is a freaking bitch. So, like, figuring out, like, what Instagram likes and what Facebook likes and what YouTube likes. Like, I've always just done whatever and threw whatever out there, which is a reflection of my follower number I guess but I don't really I guess I don't really, yeah you're bullshitting I don't really care about how many followers I get I just want people to see us get that information and know that we're legit we're actually real we live in our bus we that we did this to have more money and more time together but more money to do our own businesses so we aren't in the rat race we wanted to show people that you don't have to be in the rat race you can go out and do things on your own that you can go from that rat yes. race of yeah, you know, we used to be the soccer bombs and yeah. the this and the that and uh, made sure we always had stuff going on. And then it was, wait a minute, why don't we save more of our money? Why don't we build our own shit? Why don't we learn to problem solve better? And now we're in the stage of, we did, hey, we why do, don't we invest in ourselves? And we do a lot less complaining. I'll not, say I do. Mm, you still complain very up. much constantly. <laughs> I bitch and moan, bitch and moan, <laughs> bitch and moan. It's all we hear all day oh, long. You are stupid. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'm done. I think we got everything we needed to get done on this business one. Cool. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you learned something. Hopefully, this rambling, yeah, wasn't yeah. just a ramble, and maybe this is a, maybe a puzzle it's... piece that yeah. connects to another puzzle piece you've been working yeah. on. And fuck, okay, hey, I've heard this. Now I know. So and reach out to us if you want to be on the podcast. We want to hear about you. Yeah, absolutely. About your small you got a business. small business and your journey. It's not just for bus and tiny house people. This is for everybody. Because podcasting is not so intimidating. So we've been reaching out to a couple of people. We've had a couple of people reach out to us to be on the podcast. And they're all worried about, oh my God, it's this. 
Look, even when we did this the very first time, you know, some people are very nervous about this. It's nothing. First off, it's not always live. It's not, you know, like this time it's not live. This one we recorded. We're not doing a YouTube live, so yeah. no big nerves there. But uh, other times, cool. dude, it's just it's just a conversation. Just look at it as a telephone conversation. You know what? We were talking about this in the store the other day where, you know, we were 90s kids. So, like, we were born in 80s, 85. And so in the 90s, we would talk on the phone with all of our friends, and we would talk for hours. Now, we get to talk to friends, and we do it as a podcast. So that's kind of fun. So hit us up. We'll be on. And uh, we'll keep you updated on our adventures. Thank you guys so much for listening. Good luck, guys. Later. Later. We're coming to you from our 49 square foot podcast studio, 100% powered by solar in our schoolie Chitty Bang. You can find our shenanigans online at thecrabshomestead.com and talking Chitty on Facebook and Instagram. You can also follow our schoolie life on Facebook at Chitty Bang Schoolie and Instagram at the Crabs Homestead.